stocks, bonds, ETFs, straight out of downtown Chicago. This is Zach's Market Edge. Welcome to Zach's Market Edge, the podcast about investing in your life. I'm your host, Tracy Reinick. And this week, I'm joined by two people who I kind of finagled into coming onto this podcast in the offices here at Zach's in the hallways. And it, they are Zach's product manager, Derek Kaplan, who's been on the show before. Yes, thank you for having me. So again. yeah, welcome back. We talked about travel last time, and now this time I've, I've roped you in on this other topic. Yeah. This should, should be, be interesting. interesting. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then Zach's account manager, Nico Yokosawa, who is joining us for the first time, I think? Yep, this will be the first time. Thank oh, you. Okay, so he's a newbie. And we're here to discuss a very important investing topic called lottery stocks. What are they? Should you be buying some? What's the definition? It's kind of a term I've made up on my own um, because this is what I just call these particular types of stocks. So we need to start with what the definition is, even though I've made it up. But what I consider to be a lot of lottery stock is a stock that's either going to soar based on some kind of event or something going on at the company, or you're going to go the other way. You're going to crash. Also, usually based on the same event, it's kind of all or nothing investing, I guess. You would have to invest. These aren't really trades, although a lot of people do trade these stocks, but you're you're waiting usually for some kind of later event to happen. And you either have the winning ticket or you don't. That's why I call them lottery, because you're you're putting your money down. You know you're either going to strike it big or you're going to get nothing. So lottery stocks um, are also similar, I feel, to like the dream of winning in lotteries. Like, you know, when the Powerball gets to be like 500 million, we all rush out to buy the ticket. And then we start dreaming about like what will happen. I feel like the same thing kind of happens with the stocks. Like you're buying usually fairly cheaply. Sometimes it could be 20 bucks, but a lot of times it's 10 or maybe even under. It might even be under a dollar. I know people love those, the under dollar stocks. So then you start dreaming like, oh, it's 60 cents. And then when this thing happens that's going to soar, then it'll, you know, I'll be able to sell out at like $60. So it'll be <laughs> like this huge gain. And then you start dreaming of like all the riches you'll get from it. And that's kind of like the high of the lottery stock and like the lure of them. Right. So I invited Nico and Derek because Derek informed me in the hallways here at Sex that he doesn't really buy these stocks. So Derek, you don't really get like sucked in. It doesn't sound like. No, I've I've been there and done that. Okay. In, uh, <laughs> early two thousands, I had those little fantasies okay. I put in my yeah. head, like, "Well, I have this money in my account. This goes to this. I'm going to be like, have this." Yeah, I've gone through all that. It, it failed miserably. I know most of the time for most people, they fail miserably. Yeah. And I don't know. I just don't feel like I have that kind of luck anymore because it's pretty much unless you have that insider information or you right. have some little. It's, it's luck, and I just don't feel like I have that type of luck anymore, so I'd rather just not lose all my money. Okay, oh, and on, on a side note, do you buy lottery tickets? I mean, I will maybe a couple times a year. Okay, just, so when and it I gets won't really even big put that much money in, I'll buy like one ticket. I'm okay. like, I pay like 10, I'm like, eh, yeah. you know, whatever. It's not that big of a deal, so I'll do that, but in general, no. Okay, so you're, really you're basically, you are like anti-lottery. Correct. Okay. And Nico, what about you? Uh, for lottery tickets, uh, general rule I have is uh, if it gets over three hundred fifty million, yeah, uh, I'll then start you buying. Do. Okay, I'll that buy, would be I'll, normal. And the thing is, it's not like I go buy a bunch of them because I know it, it's 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 a fool's game it, it, it's to win the expected value. Right. You're not going to get it. It, it, it. You're basically throwing it away. It is that miracle. Oh, that hope. What if? What if? Um, but it's what odds are like one out of 250 million. So yeah. somewhere even worse than that, probably. And, uh, so I'll buy one ticket under the assumption, you know, at least you have a chance. It brings you right. from 0% chance to 0. 0.000, yeah. whatever it is. Um, so that's in my mind, that's an infinite, uh, a, a chance, infinite increase of chance yeah. from zero to something. Does that than, translate over to the buying some kind of lottery stocks then? Uh, I wouldn't say that that as much because I think it's a, a different type of game where okay. the the lottery you have an event you know what date it is you know right. it's, it's it's when it is 
for stocks, you're kind of going more in a sense. Uh, it can happen whenever. You don't know. It, it, yeah. There's even more of a bigger question mark than just the numbers being pulled. Um, but there is definitely a lure there. Yeah. The, the same kind of uh, mentality. Oh, hey, I can win big and, and then, you know, get out and I'll be set for the rest of my life. Right. So the most common industry I feel that most lottery stocks are in are like the biotechs and the drug companies oh. because they are usually trying to get something approved from the FDA and they have to go through the various phases of the trial. So oh. phase one, two, and three. And usually as you get closer to three, but they've already passed one and two. So then like the, the excitement begins <laughs> to build like, hey, they might actually be able to do this, even though many companies fail at the stage three, mm. which is usually when they start testing. If it's a drug, they'll test it on um, over 10,000 patients. And so that's when if something is not going right, it's it's usually revealed Pretty, yeah. <laughs> in that one. And those those kind of tests are very expensive. So. But you're, once you get to that, you're getting into the more like legitimate area of uh, drug uh, creation, mm -hmm. so to speak, where you might might have something viable. And that's where like the dream starts starting of like, oh, if this company can convert here and get an actual drug to the market, then they may be worth, you know, this much or that much. Um, so I do have a story to tell about my own lottery stock. Yes, I know. I find it kind of funny that I'm like the value stock strategist. <laughs> and yet here I am buying some lottery stocks. Um, so nobody's immune to the um, kind of desire to maybe get like a big winner. Basically, that's what it is. And my story started a couple of years ago, actually four years ago in 2015. That's how long I had to own this this lottery stock before it it didn't turn into the lottery. I'll just reveal that right now. <laughs> but the company name is Novavax. Um, the ticker is NVAX. They're a small drug company, and they have this kind of respiratory um, vaccine, I guess you can call it. They call it the respiratory, I'm going to say this completely, completely wrong, cyclical virus. Let's just shorten it to RSV, which is what they do. And it's a vaccine, and they're testing it on the elderly. And then they had one for, like, uh, pregnant women and infants. And it could save a lot of lives if it was actually working because it's those kinds of... Um, events in people, especially with uh, challenged immune systems, where then they can't fight off like the infection and all of that stuff. So this drug maybe could have saved a lot of people. So in 2015, I first stumbled across it because I was running the insider trader portfolio here at at Saks. And I do see a lot of drug companies come through my screens on that. That means the insiders are buying at that company. So I bought Novavax for the insider trader portfolio because a ton of the insiders were buying, like from the CEO to like the chief of research to like the directors, all these people. And they were buying like every quarter or two. And as the drug was going from phase two, it passed, it was going into phase three, and you see all these insiders spending like a lot of money buying up the shares. You're like, good times are coming. <laughs> like something. like something, yeah, right. Yeah. They do, don't you <laughs> yeah. think? Like they have to know something. So I feel like the insiders are a good sign to look for. So it was in the portfolio already. And then I did buy some for my own uh, portfolio after the the insider trader had already bought mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And my I first bought in September 2015. It was trading at $8.24. And I remember the analysts are like, oh, if they can get this to market, even with just like one segment of the areas they were testing it in, like the elderly or something, then it could be a billion dollar drug. And they had price targets on the stock of at least $15. But then everybody else was like, no, it could be even 40, 50 because they'll get bought out by a bigger drug yeah, company oh, oh. who then wants that drug, all of this. So that's when you're like, yeah. Um, and then apparently the company was not making any money because they're doing all this research. They did get a grant from the Gates Foundation. Oh. So that gave them some legitimacy too, that, hey, maybe this might work. Yeah. And then um, we're all waiting for the phase three. The company apparently also 
got like a warehouse or a, a production facility in Maryland or somewhere and that they were going to hire for. So these are all like yeah. good signs, right? right? Like right. something's going to happen. They might actually bring this drug. And then you might guess what's about to happen. <laughs> it failed the phase three and it was like shocking. Like they had a a conference call, the CEO got on there and you could just tell if you had listened to the other conference calls where they were all like, yeah, this is going to happen, that they were shocked and they weren't sure what, what happened in the data. It was a weird like flu season and they test it during the flu season. And so they did feel like we know maybe what went wrong with this test and we're going to test again. So they got some more money from Gates Foundation. They had enough cash because these the tests on like 10,000 patients is not cheap to no. do. So all was not lost, but the shares did collapse down, as you might imagine. Um, but, you know, it wasn't totally doomed because they were going to try again. And they were still seemingly believing there was still some insider buying going on after this. So this was in 2016. So I thought, oh, okay, this might not you know, I'm going to stay in it. Now I did buy some more shares. Some more, what was the I price, did. What did the price drop to? Um, it dropped yeah. way low because, <laughs> you know, nothing else way was going on. <laughs> yes. Way lower than 825. So I think I bought some at like $4 and yeah. then I bought some, um, let me see, I wrote it down. Um, then I bought, well, then it kept going. It kept sliding. Cause then people <laughs> thought, mm, may, might not happen. Then it was at $1.50, it was at $0.90, cents, it was at $0.82 cents, um, heading into 2017. I had my last buy was in July 2017 at $1.46. Uh. But this is where you're like, but wait, if they can get this drug still in phase three, there's still hope. Mm -hmm. Then think about if I bought some at $1.46, what could happen, oh, yeah. right? So this is the lottery aspect. The dream the dream did not die. Did not. <laughs> and, and like you said, there were a lot of good positive signs yes. leading up to all this. I mean, yes. the Gates Foundation is definitely a, right? you know, a very good cause. They, they, yeah. Worldwide trying to solve problems. Right. They put their back in behind this. It's right. not something that's small. Right. Um, and then especially the insider buys. Yeah. I mean, that, those guys have their skin in the game too. Right. They're not, they're, totally. they're, they're, they're definitely, you know, doing everything they can for their own self interest yes. to get this going. They have like succeed. thousands of shares, oh, these yeah. guys yeah. at this point. So I was like, okay, I might, you know, I'm in it to, I'm either going to win everything mm -hmm. or this is going to go to zero basically. Mm. So then we're all waiting for the phase three, it's coming. It's coming in March of this year. We get on there, and as you might expect, it failed again. Um, failed the phase three, but they failed in meeting their primary objective. They did meet the secondary objective for the vaccine, so it didn't help the patients as much as they originally thought. Mm -hmm. That would be the real blockbuster one, like okay. Game Changer, but it did meet the secondary, so it gave some assistance. Like, for instance, it would keep some patients out of the hospital, oh, which no. is still a big deal, um, but... Now they're in discussions with the FDA and with the European regulators about whether or not they can still bring this to market, whether or not it has like some kind of commercial window where they can sell it as like a, not the greatest vaccine, but still helpful kind of vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. But at that point, the shares collapsed and went down to like 55, 60 cents. I did sell out at like, I think it was like 50 two or something 53 cents it's at like 51 right now because now some people the reason it didn't go to zero is some people are still waiting because they gave you this hope of oh this secondary you know endpoint was met and we uh -huh. still may be able to bring something to market blah blah but i'd had enough at that point <laughs> i was like no um i it, I was glad to get out with just even some kind of value for yeah. all the shares, but this was a four year odyssey. And I looked up to see, and this is kind of one of the dangers of the lottery stocks. It wasn't a big portion of my portfolio. So I do encourage people who are, who are investing in yeah. these kinds <laughs> of things. Don't put like all of your money in. don't be like that guy. Um, I don't know if everybody 
you know, saw that when Tiger Woods just won the Masters, there was a guy who bet. Yeah, oh, the 85, bet yes. oh, yeah. And his wife was like, oh, please don't. And he's like, I yeah. got to do this. He said it was his hot, his <laughs> yeah. entire net worth, yeah. which that was nuts. I'm glad it worked out for him, but... It's just like yeah. that story. How, it's so hard to believe. But that, that probably happened like thousands of times for other like Tiger Woods oh, yeah. matches beforehand. You just oh, don't sure. hear that in the news, yeah, they're right? Not, they, Only the success Right, story. right. They're not going to go and say, hey, I just lost 85,000 putting it out on time. Um, yeah, no, they're not going to brag about that one. So yes, we only do tend to brag about our winners. So for, for this podcast, I am divulging my losses. So I didn't, I didn't go to zero like most lottery stocks do, but it still was pretty painful because I looked up at least the last three years after the first failure in 2016. So over the last three years, I could have gotten out then, mm. but, um, Novavax is down 90% over that time oh, period. 90%. Yeah. And then if I had just taken that money and, yeah, you know, in put it in the S&P 500, yeah. yeah, I looked that up, the SPY, that was up 48% over the same mm. time period. So still better. Or if I just put it into the Amazon, something like that, that was up 209% over the last three years. Quite an opportunity cost. Well, yes, that's also what you have to like look at, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but the, the... The lure of the big, oh, finally, one day I will get this is very um, alluring, basically. Yeah. It, it does suck you in. And I, I definitely was on this. And then plus, once it failed the first time and once I added more to my position, then I was kind of in it since they were going to do the phase three again. I'm like, well, why sell now? I might yeah. as well just yeah. – Stick it you out. Really, you already really hate yourself too. Yeah, yeah. right. Something what if, happened right. after you got out. <laughs> right, right. And that's also the thing. Like maybe the secondary um, objective will work. They will get a drug to the market, and these shares will go back up a couple dollars or whatever it'll be, or maybe even more. And good for those who stayed in there. But I could not because there's still risk that they won't have any kind of drug, or they'll run out of cash before they can bring something mm -hmm. to the market. And so I just redeployed it into something else because it's it's not it wasn't worth it at that point but for those interested in in buying also gets harder to look at <laughs> well <laughs> for sure and it's just sitting there and also it can take not just months i mean they'll go to the fda and all this but i mean even just this phase three was like several years to rerun the phase three wow. it's it's a long process with the drug stocks oh, yeah. so oh, people yeah. should be aware of that like if they're buying one that's passing phase one and two like you might still have a couple of years to wait, and probably think about all the time that you spent reading all this news and stuff. Oh, yeah. looking at all that. I mean, it's a yeah, lot. and listening to the conference calls. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so that one's it's out of my portfolio, but I was kind of looking around to think about what some other lottery stocks are. Now, there's always going to be the drug stocks, the biotechs. There's other ones out there. I see them come through my screen for the insider still, and then I'm like, no, it's a drug stock, and I. I have decided a while ago not to put those into the insider trader actually anymore because the process is usually really a long process, even if the insiders are buying and they think they're close to getting the drug approved. Mm -hmm. And the insider trader holding period is a shorter term. It's yeah. only like one to three months. And so really everyone's just trading these stocks on no news, waiting for the tests to be mm. run and everything. So I don't buy them for that, but I do see them come through there. So I'm always kind of like, oh, what's this one? <laughs> what's happening? And I try to check myself. But there's some other areas I feel that could be lottery stocks. So like the retailers, a, a company like JCPenney, where it's been so down on its luck, it's not really going to have like one big event that's either going to save it or not, but it, it could kind of. I mean, it's trading at $1.30 now. Oh, wow. I mean, but these with the retailers, another one is Pier 1. The ticker there is PIR. I have been yeah. watching Pier 1 for a while. It keeps on going down, right? Yeah, <laughs> now it was above a dollar to $2. They got they fired the CEO. They had an, the board kind of took over. They had interim CEO in there. I'm not I think they still do. And now they had another bad quarter. The Christmas quarter was bad. And now the shares are trading at 43 cents. Oh, wow. You do have to watch about bankruptcy with the retailers for sure. Even yeah. something like JCPenney, you have to watch out for. Yeah. Uh, even like five or six years ago, I've been in a lot of Pier 1. It never yeah. seems like that many people are ever in Pier 1 imports to begin with. So I've always It does have, <laughs> I feel like it has like a millennial problem. Yeah. Like they don't, they're not attractive to the millennials. Have no. you ever been in one, Nico? I, maybe like 
two times in my life, okay. and the last time was over a decade ago. Okay, yeah. yeah. See, this is the problem. A lot of people I ask, the younger people, they're like, oh, I went there once with my mom or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like that was the extent of it. So, yeah. But you could look around some retailers. I've been burned a couple times on the retail ones, too. But if they can get it together and turn it around possible that they could get kind of a lottery stock scenario yeah. with some of those. Another area that I thought was kind of hot that is kind of lottery-ish are the pot stocks because we had Tilray, remember the oh, yeah. huge move on those. So Tilray came to the market around $20 and then it soared up to 148 It yeah. didn't even have an event and it's it was like, like crazy. Just- yeah. <laughs> and now it's back down. I think it's around 50 but that was a gain of 400%. So they didn't even need to <laughs> to go to the FDA or anything with that one. But some of these are any of you lured into, you know, dreaming of when the U.S. legalizes it and that some of these pot stocks could see huge gains. It's kind of like a similar scenario to some drug stocks. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, in essence, some of yeah. these marijuana, they're they're kind of like drug stocks because the yeah. medical marijuana is you're basically, right. you know, you're, right. you're kind of investing that, oh, this yeah. market That's though, true. You know, is going to explode. Yeah, the hope of... You know, them using it for medical reasons mm-hmm. and then um, even like, you know, in, in actual drugs, there have been already some approvals for it being mm-hmm. used in like an epilep- epilepsy drug and things like that. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, I guess it is kind of like a, a drug stock yeah. in disguise. Kind of in essence. Yeah. But um, Nico, have you, are you trying to get in on, on those kinds or... Uh, not at the current point right now, uh, not as much. I was in them... Uh, Earlier in the past uh, couple of years, okay. um, it was in Afria. Uh, previously, it was in Cron, uh, uh, the Tickers Cron, yeah, Kronos, Kronos, Kronos Group. Group. Yeah, uh, I was in both those before and made a nice little profit off them. Nothing uh, too crazy. I think both of them uh, almost. 100 percent return but i got out of them once i started seeing the kind of yeah. rise you know you see with the, the till rate you know you just sometimes you just gotta pull the profit instead of just having the i guess the, i cut the lottery dream yeah <laughs> you know yes I, I, at some point my, my my fundamental investor in me just said this is just too overpriced yeah. you know or, or, or if anything it'll come back down and i can get back in later I, yeah you know buy it in again cheaper um that's actually kind of what's happening right now with, with the le- the more recent one uh chronos group uh, I was in at around nine, uh, got out around uh, 15, 16, so not 150% return ish. And okay. then it just kept going, oh, going, going, going to 25. And, you know, from 15 to 25, I'm banging my head, oh, what'd you do? What'd right. you do? What'd you do? Why'd you do that? Uh, but now you finally see it coming back down. I yeah. didn't see what the price is at uh, today. I believe a couple of days ago it was hovering back down at 18 again. Uh, but I d- definitely back on the swing. Uh, a little bit more to reality ever since these earnings yeah. reports started coming out uh, for the first quarter here. Yeah, I do feel like some investors are kind of looking at the earnings on these. So, yeah. and they don't tend to do that with the lottery stocks because you're really dreaming of like, oh, the future. But I, I did look up Aurora Cannabis, um, that ticker is ACB, and they're not expected to be profitable in fiscal 2018, though they're only losing 18 cents and then they're expected to lose. Um, only four cents, I think, in fiscal 2020. Tilray, uh, that's T L R Y, is the ticker for them. They're going to lose a dollar four this year, and then a loss of 36 cents. So, but that is what you see a lot with the drug stocks, with the other ones, like they're waiting mm-hmm. for something. But this is going in the right direction, unlike the drug ones, which have no way to get money in until yeah. they actually bring the drug yeah. to market. At least these guys have some other kind of business model where they could yeah. possibly be, you know, bringing in something, some earnings in the in the near yeah. term. Well, because they're, they're actually growing the product and, and being able yeah. to sell it and market it. Um, I think you will start seeing some some either winners and losers or some consolidations because yeah. the market is just going to get overset. I mean, I feel like the, the the news of marijuana stocks has been out for a while and it's just finally right. started to heat up in a, in a bigger sense of the population of people paying attention to it uh, and actually putting their money on it. Yeah. Um, but then you see when everyone gets it, it's that FOMO. Everyone rushes in. Yeah. And just they, you said, like you said, you see with the tail rate, with the crime, all, all of these. Um, and at some point, it's just more emotion than it is actual. Right. 
logic or, yeah. or, or what, what, what that's is the lottery aspect yeah. of it though. Well, I just know <laughs> when, it, catch, it does it catches yeah, you some it does. of my friends who like know nothing about stocks when they're talking to me about like pot stocks yeah. and I got all this you know I bought this I'm like oh that's when I know to actually stay away <laughs> okay <laughs> was it when you hear your taxi driver yeah. telling yeah. you what's, what's yeah. the buy that's no, what's I've had the gear definitely a lot out. of friends talk about it. and I, I still think that market they just don't know what's going to go on exactly with it there's going to okay. be barriers to entry there's going to be new people yeah. coming in the market with a lot of money to play so I really don't I don't I just don't like it right now. So you are out. You oh, to, have you I, ever well, bought any? Yes, I have, but I bought after like a a huge price hit because okay. it goes up and down and up and down. Yeah. So I take a huge, you know, price hit and then I'm like, oh maybe I'll get like seven or eight percent off this. And I've done it okay a few times. But like beyond so, trying to like, oh I, this stock is gonna go no, because I, I think it's insane to speculate for the than, future. Yeah, for the future with Pop, okay. You don't know how the government's going to regulate it. You don't right? know what type of company. I mean, you see right now with CBD, like at first there's only a few companies. Now Walgreens, they're doing oh like Burger yeah, right. Like everyone's freaking yes. doing it because there really isn't <laughs> like anyone can make CBD. So it's right. not like any sort of barriers to entry. Right? So I, I kind of see that same with pot. You don't know where once it becomes legalized, you don't know yes. where it's going to go. So I just don't like that sort of speculation. Okay. So both of you basically are trading it, but you're not investing in it. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I do feel like one of the differences with a lottery stock, even though a lot of people trade them, is that you are investing in it in the hopes of the big gains later, <laughs> like the big, the big surge. Yeah. So it's a little different. Um, although, like I said, I know plenty of people and I've seen them on StockTwits who are trading Novavax over the last four years, the same amount of time I was sitting there holding it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of other people are just holding and hold on to a lot of those drugs type of stocks yeah. for those reasons. Um, okay, well, this is kind of interesting. Do either of you feel the lure to do the lottery stocks now that we've talked about them at all, Nico? Do you feel like, oh, maybe I should go yeah. look at some of those again? Well, the, you said that now that Novak's at 50 cents, I can, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can this yeah, is the time I to get in. <laughs> This is a whole entire thing. If I really, I don't know. If I have a thing for like gambling, I'll go. To, I'm not even big on casinos. A gamble. You know what I mean? Like I'm not either. That's what's so weird. And yet here I was. I could go to a roulette years. table and throw some money know. down on a you know Maybe a few numbers, and it's probably pretty much the same difference. And I right? don't need yeah. to take as merely as enough time and have as much worry, right? And everything like that. So that mm. is true. You have to kind of just. If you're investing in it, you kind of have to just buy it and then ignore most of what's happening Which and I, hope it's good. I have a hard time doing way. that. I'm too okay. like, obsessive to like, I'll, I'll keep on looking for that news. Yes, I could understand that. I, I definitely do get, for, it goes by case by case. Whenever, okay. maybe if I'm in the mood or something, or I have something a little bit extra on the side, uh, whenever I make a, a speculative type of play, it's not a huge position uh, typically. Um, but, you know, if it does hit, it'll be yeah. exponential. It's like, oh, well, at least that grew to however thousand percent. Um, but it, I'll always go in with the idea that if I lose all this, if it does go to zero, I, that's fine. Right. You, know, I, you it, definitely it is, have to have that kind yeah, of mentality. It, it is a gamble. It's, it's okay to lose, lose a couple thousand dollars. <laughs> no, the same thing, but usually if I feel comfortable enough losing a certain amount of money, that money's not enough for me to really make a huge profit. You I know see. what I mean? It's not yes. going to change it's, my it's, life. It's I not see. a life changer. <laughs> or anything. So I've done that before, but if I do it, it's like, ah. Uh, What's the freaking difference? So you know? your five hundred dollars going yeah. to like three thousand yeah. is not like gonna yeah, make you quit your yeah. job or anything. It's not a life changer. <laughs> so I'm just yeah. like, yeah. yeah, that's true. I when that. that happens, you're just like, damn, I should have put more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's that's true too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on with the lottery stocks, but this is a good topic because I do think a lot of people like them and oh, yeah. want to be in them, and it's good to just kind of cover like the pros and cons mm -hmm. to this style of investing. So. So uh, caveat emptor or whatever, you know, beware when you're buying these and um, keep your wits about you. And don't put all of your money on it like the Tiger Woods guy because that's yeah, a little that's... crazy. It worked out. What did he get? 1.1 million? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. But I wonder if that means he'll do it again. Um, oh, the guy makes terrible decisions. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna yeah. Lose. Probably <laughs> will. <laughs> yeah. I oh, guarantee boy. you won't have that much money for that. Right. One. Right. Um, okay. So let's cover some of the tickers we talked about on today's show. There is Novavax and it's still out there, a little over 50 cents. I'm looking. And yes, VAX is the ticker there. A couple of these retailers could have lottery stock 
uh, kind of behaviors, but be warned about the bankruptcies. Uh, Pier One is P-I-R, J.C. Penny is J.C.P. Then we had some of the um, marijuana stocks, the cannabis. Kronos Group is C-R-O-N. Aurora Cannabis is A-C-B. And Tilray is T-L-R-Y. There's some others which we didn't mention, but you can go check out one of the, the marijuana podcasts we've done on those to find out some more tickers if you're interested in those. But always, again, be sure to subscribe to get the latest Market Edge podcast so you don't miss a single episode because you never know what we're going to cover here on the show. And you can get us on Apple SoundCloud or on SoundCloud and on Apple Podcasts. We're on both of those. And you can also get us on Spotify now. But be sure to get us somewhere so you don't miss a single episode. And I'll see you again next week with some more stocks. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.